Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa Shield. I'm Benjamin Shield. And this is Getting Inside the Right Male Mind. I have created this podcast because I adore my husband. And after 19 years of being in this relationship, being 17 of those years being married to this man, I created this podcast so that I could share him with the world because... Some of the conversations that we have are so beautiful and so deep, and Benjamin's perspective on just about everything is so lovely that I wanted women to be able to hear how a truly great man thinks and feels about things. So we are so happy that you're here. And today we have a wonderful, wonderful topic. We are going to talk about three ginormous turnoffs for men. Now, as women, we, you know, on a date, like when you're on a a first date or a second date or even a third date, these are the kinds of things that men are going to be looking for and listening for the behaviors that are going to turn them off and send them running for the hills. So if you ever go on one of those three, four, five hour dates with a guy and he never calls you back, you Mm. may have committed one of these faux pas. And we may even add a couple extras if there's time. And we're going to cut this into two parts. Mm. We're going to do a part one and a part two because there, this is a really, really, really rich topic to explore. If you come up with some of your own, any of the men who are listening, you can send them to me. We will talk about them. I would love to get your input. What are some of the things that you guys that turn you off on a date? The things that women do that we don't know we're doing that you wish we knew we were doing. <laughs> So, honey, I'm going to let you kick it off. What is the first one that you want to talk about? Well, the first one is actually done with, you know, a well-meaning intention. You know, a woman may show up to a date and portray her life so complete, so full, and so happy already that a man doesn't feel where he could fit in. And not only where he could fit in, but how he could make her life better. Because a, a man wants to really make a woman happy. And if she's full of just friends and organizations that she belongs to and a successful career and all of those things, he's sitting there thinking, how is this going to work? <laughs> what, what can I offer her? Yeah. What can I, how can I make her happy if she can buy everything and do everything and she's so independent? Yeah. What, what can I offer her? Yeah. And so we could have a great date with great conversation, but the conversation often revolves around what the woman is doing. And almost uh, as if she's trying to prove to you mm-hmm. how wonderful she is. Right. And I think women go overboard with that, honey, in that we want you to think that we're not needy. Right. So trying to act secure is an act of insecurity. Or and acting overly secure. Overly secure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a lack of understanding how men think and feel. They actually want us to be to ask them for things, to ask them to do things, to ask their opinions, to ask for their help, right? Yeah. And a lot of that is is a woman mirroring back a man's masculinity to him, which is so important, even on a first date, mm-hmm. you know, in subtle ways. But if a woman appears to have it all together, well, man can't find a way to to fit in and be the man in the relationship. Well, and he actually, I think, feels emasculated Mm -hmm. and feels also like um, he's going to have to fit into her life. Yeah. Yeah. And talk about that a little bit, because that is such a turnoff to a man. Well, a man wants to make a woman happy, and he wants to be able to provide for her and protect her. And by protection, meaning that she shows some vulnerability that a man could really take care of her. Mm -hmm. And that's so important to a man, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's, 
it's wonderful to to sit across from a woman who's so accomplished and you know has everything together and it's a really interesting evening but it's not going to lead to a second date mhm but it's interest it's even more beautiful if that woman who's so accomplished and has so much going on can turn to that man and say I'd love to get your input on this. Yes. I, you know, I so value your opinion and really open up that door for that man or, gosh, you know, I have so much going on in my life and what I'm really missing is someone to share it all with. It would make me so happy if I had a wonderful man like you Mm -hmm. to enjoy all of these wonderful things together. Right, and it's not just sharing the wonderful things in her life, but really reaching out and saying, and I would love to share those things that are so important to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would really make a man. Yeah. Yeah. That we could feel share, like a man. That we could share the things we both love mm-hmm. together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's really interesting. We have a couple who's in our mastermind group. So 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 sweet, uh. and one of the most beautiful and touching things about this relationship is that our client is so successful Mm -hmm. in her own right. I mean, in a very demanding and uh, high pressure job, Mm -hmm. very, very, very successful woman. And she and her now boyfriend Uh uh, have read the the five love languages Mm -hmm. book and she's aware that his love language is quality time. Mm-hmm. And the sweet thing is that as busy as she is and as much as she has going on in her yeah. life, it is so beautiful to see him reaching out to her and wanting to yes. find things that they can do together. And I remember she said, we decided that we would do one indoor activity and, <laughs> and one, one outdoor, outdoor activity. Right. And I think their outdoor activity was to play backgammon. And, you know, he is uh, he is a very successful businessman, but he loves music and he plays the guitar. Yeah. And even though it's completely out of her wheelhouse, oh. he she said she would learn guitar because he wants to play with her. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is that she's open to letting him teach her mm-hmm, how right. to play. Right. And she said, you know, I was lucky to spend 15 minutes or 20 minutes a day practicing. And then when she came on one of our group calls in our mastermind group, she said, and yesterday I spent 50 minutes. And she was so <laughs> excited, mostly because she knew how excited that made him. Right. So the receptivity, the openness, mm-hmm. the willingness of you know this wonderful client yeah. to open up and, and make room in her life. He also has a son, mm-hmm. and she's in her 50s and doesn't have children of her own, mm-hmm. but she's welcoming this man's son. And we asked, we ask each of our mastermind mm-hmm. clients at the end of our of the session, they each pick a stretch. Mm-hmm. And we asked her what her stretch was, and she said she wanted to find more ways to include his son. Right. And you could imagine how a man would feel if it were just the opposite, if a woman's life was so busy Mm -hmm. and so filled with activities, even if it's really important activities like charities and political actions Mm -hmm. and all of that. And she would say, I I don't have time to learn the guitar. Right. And how that would the difference in how he would feel if she would say that as opposed to, yeah. well, I can, I can do 15 or 20 minutes a day wow. and it would make him feel like a million bucks. Yeah. And it's so sweet knowing that, that he loves spending time with her yeah. and knowing that they only are able to spend one day a week together yeah. on her drives home from work. They they FaceTime and they, yeah. they talk when she's driving home from work. And, you know, she comes out of this job and she's working 10, 12 hour days yeah. and um, she makes time. She knows how much it means to him. And she doesn't say I'm too busy or yeah. I'm tired or I need to decompress. In fact, she knows it's so important yeah. to him that, that she's cut back on her sleep. She was getting like mm-hmm. eight and a half. Yeah 
hours yeah. of sleep, and now she gets seven. Yes. You know, because it's so important for him yeah. and also important for her. Yeah. You know, well, she's so yeah. happy she found him. Yeah. She's so grateful, and her, you know, out of gratitude, out of love, come, you know, comes gratitude, and out of gratitude, we do things for for the yeah. one we love, and it just comes from love and gratitude. Yeah. So, in our course, we talk about finding the guardian of your soul. Yeah, and being the guardian of each other's soul means not only taking care of that person's soul and helping it along its journey wherever it goes, but also allowing someone in your life mm -hmm. to be the guardian of your soul. Yeah. And so that balance that I feel that we've found mm -hmm. and, and many of, of the, your clients in Emotionally Naked Dating. And, in my 12-week yeah, course, yeah. yeah. And, and the other courses as well. Yeah. That, um, that they have found the guardian of their soul and they are the guardians of their partner's soul. Yeah, and they do these things out of love. They make room and yeah. time for each other. I know from the very first moment we met, honey, from our from the very first moment when you were running late, you got you got lost. Yeah. <laughs> and so you were late for the date. Yeah. And just how I was thinking about you, I was making room for you, right? Yeah. To be you because you know, I made room for you and you felt that when I said to you, you called the restaurant cell phones, cell phone reception in those days was not the best. Right. And um, I don't even know if I had my cell phone with me, to be honest. It was 20 years ago, yeah. 19 and a half. And um, you called the restaurant and you, you know, you were so exasperated and apologetic. And I just said, I'm sitting here enjoying myself yeah. and I'll be here when you get here and yeah. don't worry, I'm, I'm, I'm totally fine. And I made room for you. You had me with, I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's because it could have gone completely the other way. Yeah, it Com could have. And I could have walked into that first date, you know, just, you know, knowing that this is going to be a miserable evening and, you know, I'm going to try to make it up for the rest of the evening and I didn't need to. We just started fresh. Yeah. We started with a fresh... Well, and I made room for you. Uh, I made room for you in my life instead of saying, well, where are you? And when are you going to get here? Uh, and what happened? Uh, and all, I didn't even ask any of the, I didn't say any of yeah. those things. I just said, I'm, I'm sitting here enjoying myself and I'll be here when you get here. Yeah. Yeah. And when you talked about your life, it wasn't that it was so full and so complete. It was that you were on a journey. Mm -hmm. And part of that journey was, was really looking for a partner, mm -hmm. you know, a life partner. Mm -hmm. So that just opened up everything. Well, and the way I said it mm -hmm. was so lovely because I didn't say, you know, do you want marriage and are, mm -hmm. do you want, you know, whatever. Like, are you looking to get married? Do you want a mm. long-term relationship or any of those things? I just, you know, you said, what are you looking for? And I said, look, I've been working so hard on right. myself all these years. And right. I said, all I want to do is find a great guy and have fun with him. And that was, you know, I, I put my hands together and <laughs> quietly said, thank you, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But th there was so much room in... in I didn't even know it at the time, but I w it was so spacious. Mm. It was like, I just want to have fun. And that's really what our life has been, yeah. you know? And I wasn't trying to prove to you anything. I remember, you know, on that date, I wasn't trying to prove anything. Mm. I mean, it wasn't like I wanted you to know that I had this fabulous business. Yeah. And I mean, we may have talked about some of those things. I think I mentioned that I had a little gift store uh -huh. at Su Sunset Junction and, you know, but you, you heard immediately that my passion was personal transformation and this beautiful journey and just wanting a partner, yeah. wanting somebody to celebrate life with. Welcoming someone into your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think just to conclude, you know, so many women today 
are so are trying so hard to prove that they want a man, but they don't need a man, and that they've got it all together, and that you know they're successful, they've got friends, they're busy, they've got their grandkids and their kids, and they're this and they're that, and they travel and they're doing this and they're doing that, but there's no invitation. Mm. There's no invitation yeah. for a man to really, you know, that the, they're so busy proving that they don't need a man when they're, they're on that date. What they want more than anything yeah. is is someone to share their lives with, and some and and somebody who also brings a life and wants to share his life with her. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. it would be so much more effective. What would what would you want to hear from a woman? Well, that that she would welcome um, a relationship, that she would welcome a man to share her life, and even to complete her life. And when a man hears that during a date, he goes home and he thinks about what it would be like to be with her. Well, and also to say, like one of one of the things I have seen with women. Over the 19 years that I have been coaching, one of the most important things that I think most women miss is not just like you said about, I want a man to share my life with me, Mm. but also I am willing to share his life. Right. A man wants to hear, ultimately, maybe not on the first date, he won't hear it, but what what a woman could offer him Mm -hmm. because... So often a man is there trying to prove himself, trying to prove he's safe and, and he's reliable and he makes a good income, a good enough, and he's good enough for her. And it would be so wonderful for a man to hear from a woman what she feels she could do for a man. Well, and also that she's willing to participate in the things he loves doing. Yeah. If he loves hiking or skiing or biking or whatever, you know, whatever those things are that he loves to do. I think often women are looking for somebody to do things with them, but they're also not as open Mm. to doing things with the man. We have a client who, and I'm trying to remember the exact words, but that the man who she's dating, or now a fiancé, I think, Mm -hmm. uh, said that no woman has ever asked him yeah. What, what, how did that go? Yeah, he said he said no woman has ever asked him what he really wanted. Yeah. Ever. And ever. Ever. Like he thought it was his job to make a woman happy and no woman had ever asked him like what it was that he wanted, what would make him happy and then actually did it for him. And now they're engaged. Yeah. 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 So it was really beautiful, but the women that I've seen have written in their profiles a line about how, you know, I love a man who has wonderful hobbies and I'd love to, you know, do those things with you. Yeah. You know, I'm open to whatever the things are that you love doing and I would love to share in those activities with you. And so making room in one of the exercises we actually have the women do in the course is to clean out a part of their closet or mm. clean out a dresser drawer. You know, you want a man to give you a key to his place and clean out, mm. you know, a drawer for you. Well, you need to do the same for him, mm. right? Make yeah. room for him in your life and welcome him into your life as well yeah. and create space. And that may mean getting rid of a few throw pillows, yeah. <laughs> Make, but really making space for a man in your in your life in your heart you know and communicating that to a man yeah. and 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 to say look the whole idea behind attachment theory is that we um attachment theory is the theory that there are different attachment styles and that we are all looking for a secure attachment where somebody isn't anxious or somebody doesn't run away Mm. if a person tries to get close to them, Mm. but where there's a feeling of security that two people really 
both want to welcome each other into their, you know, one another's lives. And it is so important to open up your heart and make this other person feel safe yeah. and welcome. Yeah. And if a man feels that on the first date, there's a very, very good chance there's going to be a second, a third, mm -hmm. and a fourth date. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And not from a needy way, but not from need, but as an invitation. Yeah. It yeah. needs to be a welcoming, an invitation. Uh, you know, as I said, I'm just looking for somebody to have fun with. Yeah. And when a man hears that invitation, he he rises up to the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he... But if he's sitting there listening to a woman who's so complete, there's no room, there's almost like a, there's like a barrier. Mm -hmm. And he leaves feeling smaller. Yep. Yeah. Well, and the last thing I'm going to say is in a secure attachment between two people, there is need. It's not just want. Mm -hmm. Securely yeah. attached people need each other. We're yeah. getting older. We just put our dog down. Mm -hmm. You know, we let go of one of our, our children. Yeah. He had 14 and a half years. I needed you. Yeah. I We needed each yeah. other to go yeah. through that together. I wouldn't even want to imagine what that would have been like without yeah. you. We yeah. need each other. And yeah. any human being who thinks that another person is like a want and not a need is mm. Hitting herself. Yeah. We need partnership. We need love. We need support. Mm. Life is full of challenges and we're vulnerable whether we want to admit it or not. Yeah. And having a partner is the most precious gift in the world. Yeah. So this idea that I want a man, but I don't need a man, you're gonna, you know, want um, you know, want and not need yourself into being single. Yeah for the rest of your life yeah. if that's the way you're thinking so babe let's go to the next one let's look at another one well another thing that can turn a man off derail or, a date yeah, derail a date i think that's a is, good one yeah is that is so often a woman may seem really cool on a date mm -hmm. and and not interested in the man mm -hmm. and so you know a man is really trying to prove himself on a date and that he's could be a provider, that he's reliable, and he really needs that feedback. You know, even a, a touch on the arm, um, you know, a leaning in, um, uh, asking questions about things that he's passionate about, some things that that show that she's really interested in him, mm -hmm. and more than what just what he can offer. Right, you know, more than just trying yeah. to information right. collect. Right, do, do you do you own or do you rent? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, where do you vacation? Things like that. But deeply, deeply interested in him, mm -hmm. and that will light a man up, mm -hmm. and again lead to a second and third and beyond date. But if she doesn't, and I know I'm guilty of this, I know that I was way up in my head and not in my heart. Mm on dates and i was trying to figure out if i even liked the guy sitting uh, across from me and a lot of women will say well i don't want to lead him on mm. but in not leading them on and being so in their head trying to figure out if they even like this guy and if he meets all her criteria yeah. nothing happens there's no opportunity opportunity for that spark yeah and there are, are ways that a woman could show that they're interested, leaning in, a touch on the arm, and we mentioned really inquiring about things. Curiosity. That, curiosity, insatiable curiosity. Mm -hmm. And what we would call bell jarring, mm -hmm. where it's as if there's a bell jar over the two of you and nothing else exists. Nothing. You know, not the iPhone ringing, not you know, the conversation at the next table, not the quality of the food or, you know, mm -hmm. um, but really that connection as if the, only the two of you existed at that moment. Mm -hmm. And that will really, you know, often, because a man doesn't get that with his male friends. Right. You know, they often sit, even not even facing each other, they may face in a bar, the TV set playing a, 
a football or looking game. Looking at the waitresses. Yeah, or, or, yeah, whatever it is, you know. But they don't get that attention from their male friends, and when they get it from a woman, even on the first date, it's just like water to a, a thirsty man. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Women are so afraid of showing too much, much interest and then a man comes on sexually or, you know, gets overly excited. And so we withhold, you know. Yeah. And I think it's an art to show interest and, and really to communicate early on, you know, look, you know, I've, I've jumped into relationships too quickly, perhaps had sexual encounters too quickly and it hasn't worked so i'd love to get to know you mm -hmm. and if this if this is important for both of us let's get to know each other and become friends and build on that and you can communicate that with warmth and sincerity yeah. and heart and still be connected without letting a man think oh i'm being nice to him or i'm that this is an open invitation to you know mm -hmm try to get me into bed or something. Yeah, a simple touch on the, the arm, holding your gaze just a, a few moments longer than, mm -hmm. than one normally would. All those things, just, you know, a man will come home from a date and he will be thinking about you. Mm -hmm. He will be thinking about you. And it's also, you know, being kind and nice and heartfelt doesn't mean that you're inviting sex, sex or inviting a man you know, saying, I'm going to sleep with you. Yeah. It just means that, hey, I'm just getting to know you. I don't know where this is going to go. But it's opening up the possibility and letting a man see that you you mm -hmm. appreciate him, that, yeah. you're, that he's an interesting human being, that there's something there, you know. But if you don't do that, and I know I didn't, I mean, I think if I went back, I, I, I think that is this one was my number one mistake. I was so afraid um, because so many of my previous um, encounters with men had just been sexual. Mm. It wasn't their fault. It was the only way I knew how to relate to men. And so many of my uh, encounters wound up you know, being sexual ones that went nowhere. Mm -hmm. And so I was so afraid of giving a man a go ahead or a wrong impression for myself. And so I just showed no interest. Right. And it's possible to put up those boundaries mm -hmm. gently without shaming the man. Yeah. Because shaming the man will just repel him. So there's a way for an invitation saying, I really look forward to getting to know you better and, and, you know, creating some, you know, eventually some intimacy when we really get to know and, and it's built on trust and safety. And there are some men who are just going to try to put the moves on a woman mm -hmm. because that's all they know. Mm -hmm. But it also will, will be a telltale sign for that woman that this isn't the right guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he may put the moves or he may make a move, and if you say, hey, you know, I've been down that road and I'd love to get to know you. I really like you. And it's too soon for that. Right. I've tried that before. Yeah. It doesn't work. And I'd love to deepen this friendship yeah. and mm -hmm. get to know you and deepen our connection and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. And then the right guy is going to say, wow, she's a class act. Yeah. And the wrong guy who continues to put mm -hmm. the move on. You yeah. dodge a bullet early on, and it's yeah. better to do dodge it early than, than after several dates. Yeah, but if a woman doesn't show any interest, the date's not going to go anywhere. Right. The guy's going to go home and say, wow, she, even no matter how beautiful she was, mm -hmm. no matter how attractive and, and all, I mean, if she's an ice queen or there's no yeah. connection or nothing. It's empty and cold. And I think one of the other issues for women today is that we are told, you know, a man is supposed to make the moves, plan the date, do this, do that, whatever. If he's interested, he's going to pursue you. And so a lot of women don't show any interest, but they like the guy or they want him to call again. But they're just like sitting there going, thinking, well, if the guy really likes me, 
he'll pursue me, right? If he's a man and he knows what he wants and what he wants is me, he's going to pursue me and he needs to prove to me that he's interested in me. So a lot of women play that game and they're on the losing end of that as well. The the wrong men are going to pursue her Mm -hmm. and the right men are going to walk away and say, "Eh," you know, and so they're going to keep attracting the players that way but the nice guys, mm-hmm. the ones who really have heart yeah. and are really, it really are interested, yeah. but yeah. felt no connection, they're going to walk away and say, gosh, you know, I don't think she was interested. Yeah. And a lot of very secure men may appear boring. Yeah. You know, may appear boring on a, on a first date in particular. And because they're secure, they're not trying to put the move on. They're not trying to they overly don't have impress. Games. Yeah. And the woman's, you know, isn't interested because there was no fireworks and they're used to fireworks. And when there's fireworks, there's danger (laughs) early on, early on, Mm -hmm. you know, um, secure relationships often build and they can seem boring at first. Like, you know, this guy is, he's a nice guy, you know, he's got all these good things, but he just, I just don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that acts more as aphrodisiac in the long run for respect yeah. and friendship and trust and safety and ultimately ultimately being the guardians of each other's souls. Well, and we have a client who is so adorable, educated, bright, successful, beautiful woman. And she met a man who's a little bit younger than her. And he is, uh, he was a virgin. Oh, right. He was a virgin, right. and, but there was something really lovely about him. And even though, you know, a million other women would have had judgments yeah. about who he was and all, she saw how special he mm-hmm. was. She saw who he was. Yeah. And they are still there together. They moved yeah. into a house, right. you know, and she's over the moon. Yeah. She's over the moon. And he's no slouch. Like, it's not, you know, mm-hmm. like this guy was uh, anything but first rate. Mm-hmm. And she just knew that whatever his life's journey was and the choices he had made and and all she created that invitation and that opportunity. Yeah, And, you know, she... Um, showed him, she showed interest and yeah. she gave him a chance. And yeah, he rose to the occasion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> More than rose to right, the occasion. Right? <laughs> yeah. And and some women will lose interest immediately if the guy shows one thing that, mm-hmm. you know, they, they question. Yeah. Like, oh my God, he, he drives a pickup truck? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to go out with a guy that drives a pickup truck. Yeah. And... We have another client who they're married now. In fact, we married them at our, our home in Los Angeles. Yep. Um, where he drove a pickup truck and she thought he was just kind of a, not a near do Down on his luck. Down on his luck. Yeah. And it turned out he owned three construction companies. He, he owned and got out before the crash. Right. This guy was so clever that he got out right before the crash, cashed in. And now they're living in a penthouse in the middle of Memphis, I think, or something. And they have this beautiful home in Mississippi as yeah, well. Yeah, beautiful home. Yeah. And and I think he opened, he has now opened another construction right. company, you know, but he, yeah. Yeah. I you mean, never but, know. But another woman may have thought, mm-hmm. oh my God, torn jeans? Are you kidding Pick me? Pickup truck. Pickup truck. <laughs> you know, and that's it. She was just yeah. lost interest. And that would have been it. Oh, and but they're so cute they together. They're very cute together. They're so and adorable. They are, yeah, they are having a lot of fun together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Not, they they said they 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 can't stop laughing. Yeah, he he his first marriage was a battlefield. He said of years, decades, yeah. and he said he he couldn't even imagine that two people could laugh as much together as they do (laughs) so quite remarkable all right babe well another thing that that can turn a man off is that when a man is vulnerable Mm -hmm. you know and it's really what we want i mean your course is called emotionally naked dating and which means being vulnerable 
and doing that in stages. And that that is the foundation of Mm. a loving, lasting partnership. Yes. Not getting physically naked, but being able to get emotionally naked. Yeah. And so the goal is that a woman will, you know, that that both people on a date, even a first date, even if it's just a small amount of vulnerability, will put it out there and then see how it's received and responded to. And sometimes a man just needs to share something. And what can kill a date and kill vulnerability is if a man is asked to process. You know, so he may share something about a past relationship or a disappointment or even a joy, you know, happiness. And if a woman begins to process, you right. know, asked to process, like, well, how does that make you feel? Oh, God, those words, that sentence is just like... <laughs> Nails on a chalkboard. Check, please. <laughs> <laughs> that might, even even worse than than um, we need to talk, oh. is how, how does that make you feel? <laughs> yeah. You know, and it could be about something good, but all of a sudden it goes from vulnerability to something cerebral. Mm-hmm. And it just for a man. kills, yeah, for a man. It just kills it. It mm-hmm. just kills it. Yeah, it's yeah. a killer. And a, 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 a man's friend, a male friend, would never ask that. Right. Because a, a, because a male friend would know not to ask that. <laughs> yeah, asking a man, how does that make you, or how did that make you feel? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes a man needs to share just to get it out, mm-hmm. or just to expose a little bit of his emotional life. And, you know, without having it questioned or having to analyze it. Or even go deeper if he doesn't want to. Yeah. Like sometimes what for a man is a lot might, you know, might seem very little for a woman and she may be wanting more details and more information. But for the man, it's a more disclosure than he may have ever given in his life. Yeah. We had a young a woman who... Um, was dating a guy and he walked her down to the Uber or whatever to go home and they were waiting outside his building and he shared, you know, he said, um, my breakup with my ex-girlfriend was really rough and I'm still working through that. And she said, God, you know, that's all he said. That was it. That was huge. (laughs) That was huge for a guy to, to share that. Huge. And if he feels that there's safety in saying that without having it come back to him, wash back at him, you know, like, well, what was it like? Or, you know, uh, how did you feel? Or, or what was wrong with it? Or, you know, all these questions. It just, just doesn't create that, that safety yeah. that a man... A man needs to be able to share himself. Yep. So one of the worst lines a woman could ever say or questions a woman could ever, you know, ask a man is how did that make you feel? Yeah. I mean, literally, probably one of the very, very worst things a woman could ask. Um, And men will, if a a woman is quiet and Mm -hmm. if she doesn't process they may open up even more just oh, on their absolutely. own. You know, just all she, all a woman would need to say is, wow, you know, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I know that that must have been hard for you. Yeah. That would be enough. Wow. And that, that would be more effective at giving a man the space to, to reveal more. Right than actually saying, asking a question or why did that happen or what did you do or how did that make you feel? Mm -hmm. But just saying, you know, thank you for sharing that with me. It would make a man feel seen Mm -hmm. and where, as opposed to being analyzed. Mm -hmm. And it would feel that someone was with him shoulder to shoulder rather than someone was being uh, like a, a psychologist you know, and saying, well, tell me, yeah. you know, how did that make you feel? Mm. And suddenly there's a hierarchy in the conversation where the man is, is less than, mm-hmm. you know, and trying to 
explain himself oh, as opposed to just being. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so important for, you know, I love that you're sharing these things, honey. And I just, I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, God, there's just so much that we don't know. It's kind of like when there's a death, you know, when someone dies and you don't know what to say, mm. you know, you feel like there somebody lost a partner or a loved one or a child or whatever and you want to be empathetic or you want, you know, and you're at a loss for words. It's almost the same with yeah. men and women. Right. You know, we often want to say the right things or be in the right, you know, be the right, create that connection with you. And we're trying so innocently in the way that we would with our girlfriends. And it works with them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? They open up, they yeah. share more, they want to process yeah. with us. And it's such a different language with men. It's a whole mm -hmm. different universe. Right. But having these keys to your universe and you know, having you share <laughs> these things is so precious. Yeah. It really is, babe. Yeah. Well, I think this is a good time to end. Okay. I think we can pick this up and, mm -hmm. and, and explore more of this because I think these are very, very useful skills for our listeners, for the women out there. I hope uh, the men who are listening in as well get value from mm -hmm. this. Maybe it will help you communicate to your girlfriend or your wife or lover the things that you need as you listen to Benjamin and me talk about some of this because I think the sadness is men and women so desperately want to connect and we don't know how right. and then we come away from a date and we just feel like wow that was a colossal waste of time yeah. or very often women feel we brought so much of ourselves we thought we were doing everything right yeah. and you know and nothing happened we don't yeah. get a call back we don't get a second or a third date and we don't know why and I think this is really useful. So we'll do more of these. I look forward to it. That's yeah. great. All this right, was baby, fun. I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing this. This is Getting Inside the Right Male Mind with Lisa and Benjamin Shield. Thank you so much for joining us. Please like and rate our podcast and go to YouTube and sign up for my YouTube channel. Um, you can find us. This is Dating Without Trauma. You know, give us your feedback. Let us know what you think. Tell your friends. And if you're interested and you really want to find the guardian of your soul, then please go to lisashield.com and watch my free 45-minute presentation. Many women say it's the best one they've ever seen. They take notes. They show me their notes. And if you really want to jump on a call and even work with Benjamin and me and find a relationship like ours, then you can sign up at the end of that webinar, that 45-minute presentation, for a consultation. And we will talk to you about how we can change your love life forever. Love to you all. Come back and see us again. Bye-bye.